Hey, hi YouTube. Uh, I hope you all guys are doing great. Uh, in this video, we are going to see a framework which is Deep Eval framework, which is an evaluation framework. And uh, if you are a Gen AI developer or LM application developer, then definitely this video can be very, very helpful for you. Uh, so Deep Eval is basically an open source framework developed by this confident AI. Here you can see. And uh, it is designed for evaluating and benchmarking deep learning models. Um, it is built to help researchers, developers and practitioners systematically assess the performance of their models across different tasks and data tests. Okay, so uh, like you might have seen that whenever you are developing an LLM application, then a lot of time you have to evaluate your answer manually. Like let, let's suppose you have 100 test cases and you run it using any for loop or something or maybe you are using prompt foo. Okay, then you have to evaluate it properly. It's not about very basic evaluation, but there should be the quality of evaluation should be like a human. Like uh, if you are having a, a question, a, a rack chat bot on your personal data, then the evaluation should be proper based on your data source. So definitely prompt foo help us in it. If you don't know about prompt foo, I have just made a previous video on prompt foo, which is around 40 minutes, where I have shown everything about prompt foo, even how we can use it in rack based application. Uh, so prompt foo is much more into automating the test cases, and also it is on the evaluation part. But deep eval is more into the evaluation part. It evaluates the responses very deeply. Okay, and uh, definitely um, um, we should combine both things while uh, evaluating our response as well as uh, using prompt for running the test cases and also for evaluation. So both can be used combiningly and both are open source, so it's, it is possible. Okay, uh, one thing, um, uh, definitely it uses an LLM to um, evaluate your answer. So it is something like you are using LLM to generate answer and then again you are using LLM to evaluate an answer. But yeah, there are modifications where you can use your own custom model for evaluation also. But currently, uh, just for sake, we can we are going to use our own LLM. Uh, sorry, we are going to use a simple GPT-4 LLM. Okay. And uh, so let's cover some uh, features. So first one is it provides a uh, like comprehensive benchmarking, like it provides a wide range of benchmark for different uh, tasks or data sets. It ensures fair comparison between models by like uh, having a uh, standardized uh, evaluation protocols. And then second is like diverse uh, evaluation metrics. It support variety of metrics such as accuracy, precision, uh, recall, F1 score. Here you can see GEVAL, summarization, regress, hallucination, a lot of things are there. And we can also define our custom uh, metrics uh, that can suit for specific needs. Then we have automated pipelines. Uh, just for uh, disclaimer, I am not going to cover this custom metrics and also I am not going to cover the how we can run DP well in our RAG application because uh, in previous video I have covered the RAG one and it became very, very long around 41 minutes because if I will not cover this RAG one in previous video, it might, it, uh, it would be like only 20 minutes. So that's why the video becomes pretty long and definitely um, it's not good for you to, to provide, uh, to just upload so many long videos. So if you need, I can create another video on how to use DP well on um, this rack framework. Okay, let's continue. So the third feature is like can be automated pipelines. So it facilitates automated evaluation process, reducing the manual effort. So it's very, very cool for the LLM application developers. It also streamlines the evaluation workflow, making it more efficient and less error prone. And then we also have visualization tools. It offers robust visualization tools to help interpret and analyze evaluation results. It provides clear and insightful visual representation for of model um, like evaluation results. Okay, and it also ex extensible, like easily extensible to accommodate new tasks, data sets, and evaluation metrics. As I told you that we can create our own custom metrics. Then it is designed to integrate seamlessly with existing deep learning workflows also. Now, what are the problems it solves? So first of all, it provides a standard way. Uh, it is efficient. It provides insightful analysis. It is good for comparison. Okay, so why should we use it? There's the same reason to have uh, efficiency so that we can uh, we can have a more uh, error prone um, evaluation things okay and the human uh, the man work should reduce there should be a fair comparison and it is open source so there is nothing to hide and the data remains on your own machine like from food okay so that's why it's, uh, that's why we should use it okay and it also provides comprehensive insights so that's why we should use it okay a uh, very big shout out to this uh, GitHub repo, very good repo, where you can see it. So now let's see the demo part. We are going to run this all things and uh, let's move to the VS Code. So uh, I have a ENV file where I have my OpenAI key because definitely for this uh, evaluation, we are going to use GPT-40. I've also created a virtual environment for this task, which is ENV1. So I have just activated it. Okay, I hope you are doing about it. Now, um, first of all, what we need to do, so uh, it comes as a package, so we need to install it. So pip uh pip install um we have to install the dp well so 
let's wait for some time until it is uh, installed definitely depends upon the speed of your machine and internet so let's wait for some time so it, it has been installed now there is an additional step which is called as uh, the login one because uh, why uh, um, we need this login because if you want to see the um, you, if you want to have a comprehensive insights and other insights should be visible in your web form then you should be logging in so let me make a dp well login okay it's not a mandatory one but i prefer it okay it looks good okay so this is how it will look like okay so i have already logged in so that's why it is looking like this but uh, what actually happens if you have not logged in then uh, whenever you will uh, click on this dp well login so you will be given an api key okay and then that api key will be very very useful you have to paste that api key here okay okay and then also you can see we, uh, this file has been created uh, which contains your api key okay now uh, whenever we will run this python file then definitely um, it uh, the evaluation will be also shown in this um, terminal as well as you can view it on that um, on that website okay so that it can be easy for you also guys okay so now let's see how we can uh, basically um, basically uh, uh, do an evaluation test okay so um, there are two uh, like I can show for both Python files as well for notebooks okay so from uh, DP well uh, just we have installed it so let me import um, uh, evaluate okay so let me import evaluate and okay cool. let me restart it maybe okay from DP well, uh, we have imported evaluate. Is it working on it? Oh, sorry, it's in markdown. Uh, that's why I was thinking why it is not working. Okay, so from uh, deep eval, we need to import the evaluate. Okay, cool. Uh, and then what we can do is we can add some metrics. So deep eval dot metrics. We did, yeah, deep eval some metrics and let's import some metrics like and let's let's suppose go with a very basic one which is answer relevancy metric but you can uh, import uh, you can take any of that uh, metrics that i was showing there okay now let's add some test cases so that uh, test cases so we can add some test cases here okay uh, it will be dot okay uh, test case import um okay it's just the test case model okay so import uh, LLM test case. Okay, let me show. Uh, show. I will show you each and everything. Okay. Uh, so first of all, let's define a, um, just a metric which can be called as answer relevancy metric, or we can say answer relevancy metric ANM. Okay, ARM. And uh, let's create an object of answer relevancy metric. And um, maybe uh, we can have some threshold to it. Like if it passes the threshold of it, then we can call it as that answer is uh, relevant to the question. Again. Okay. Now let's design one test case. Okay, we can name it anything. Okay, so let's uh, design a test case. That's why we have imported this LLM test case. Let's create an object of it. And first of all, uh, let me pass the input. So what will be the input? The input will be the question. So let's suppose we asked a question, like a very basic question. Maybe I'm um, maybe I'm taking the question which is present in the repo only. That's not the purpose. Okay, get if this uh, shoes. Um, okay, um, what if this shoes doesn't. Uh, doesn't fit me okay maybe this will be the question okay so maybe this question can be asked by the user that okay what if this uh, source doesn't fit me now you have done some rag and uh, after that you got some actual output okay then actual output um, might be like maybe the bot respond like we offer uh, 30 days uh, a 30 day trial uh, a 30 day trial uh, or we can say a 30 day full refund uh, full uh, full refund at no extra cost okay maybe this is the um, reply from the bot and definitely if you are creating a chatbot which is a lm based and definitely it needs some context which is coming from rag in prompt also we were uh, getting that context okay so the retrieval context so the retrieved context uh, is let's suppose the chunk okay i think you might be knowing about the chunkings and all okay so let's suppose it retrieved this part which is from the document like uh, or from the data source that all customers uh, are uh, eligible um, for uh, a 30 day for a 30 day full refund um, at no cost okay so let's suppose we retrieve this context from rag and then we pass it to the llf and it gave our actual output based on the input that oh, what if th this suits doesn't fit me then the actual output <coughs> 
the LLM return was we offer a 30 day full refund at no extra cost. Okay. So if you are trying to create for RAG, which is I'm not going to show in this video, then this context part should be dynamic. Okay. As we were doing it in the, um, the prompt flow. Okay. So that's it. Now let's give it a run. Uh, we have imported our evaluate at the first line. So we are going to use it. So first of all, uh, it, will, it, it accepts, I guess, two things. It accepts LLM test case and conversational test case. So first of all, let's pass the test case. So uh, sorry, test case test case and then a conversational part okay so okay so it will be the metric one isn't it yeah the matrix so what will be the matrix arm okay you can pass n number of metrics okay so i'm going to pass arm and uh, i think we are done uh, so it is running on dpl latest answer relevancy metric using gpt 40 and this is strict false and all see this redirect to this place because of we have uh, basically, we have logged in. Okay, and I know it will be uh, showing it here only. Here also, here you can see metric summary. This and the relevancy scroll is one. Uh, threshold was 0 0.7. Uh, strict false evaluation model is GPT-40. Why it passed? Because the reason is like the score is one because the answer is fully relevant and address the input perfectly with no irre irrelevant statements. Great job. Um, <laughs> okay, so this was a test case. Okay, so this is all written. Okay, but this sometimes it doesn't look good. You can click here and go to that place also, or this is the same link. Okay, so here we can see here if you go to inspect. So see, uh, this was the test case ID passed. Run duration was 4.6 seconds. Answer relevancy was the metric, and uh, it passed one because the answer is fully relevant and addressed to the question perfectly with no relevant statements. Great job. Okay, now the answer is quite relevant. Okay, so uh, what we can do is. Um, let's suppose make let's make this answer irrelevant okay so um, um, maybe um, what if sus doesn't fit okay uh, we maybe uh, we don't sell sus currently okay and let's ask this one so i think now the answer is irrelevant because uh, definitely um, we are uh, we, we are not asking about uh, the response is not about shoes okay so it failed uh, here you can see like mm, you, you can see like um, see zero because the statement we don't sell shoes currently is completely irrelevant to the input which is concerned with what do if the shoes doesn't fit because answer relevancy is like uh, what we are asking and what we are getting in the actual output so definitely the actual output that we got is not related to the input because we are asking about fitting and it is telling that we don't have it currently okay cool so um, we can have some more around it like we can have this some more uh, let's test some more um, metrics like contextual precision metric and recall metric okay contextual precision metric and contextual uh, retrieval metric or its relevancy metric let's call it as this relevancy metric okay so contextual relevancy metric and let's suppose make the threshold as like again 0 0.7 okay uh, for the same what i am going to do is for this contextual uh, relevancy metric okay and maybe what we can do is we can also add this hallucination, hallucination metric because we know as llm developer a lot of time we face this uh, problem of um, hallucination a lot of time you might have also seen um, there are a lot of hallucinations so how we can also measure it like whether the response is hallucinated or not so let me also add it so let me add the hallucination metric okay so hallucination metric so here we are and now uh, let's see for lm test case for hallucination metric uh, definitely we are here um, so let's see one by one contextual relevancy metric it needs expected output actual output and travel context okay and uh, okay so this is our actual output and what is the expected output okay so let's add it expected output so expected output is let's suppose the previous one like uh, it was like we offer a 30 day sorry 30 day um, full refund at no extra costs okay so this was our uh, expected output now for contextual precision okay contextual we are adding contextual precision metric so for contextual precision we need also actual and expected for contextual relevancy metric or recall uh, for relevancy we don't need the um, expected output definitely for hallucination uh, for hallucination uh, what we need so for hallucination we need uh, like 
um, input actual and um, context okay so we need this um, expected output for our relevancy metric okay so that's why we are using it uh, no issues okay so we are having expected as well as actual so if someone needs actual it will take actual if someone needs uh, expected it will take expected okay so we are passing this test case and now we are trying to run for all cr okay so this should be like it should be cp con, um, for precision and then we should have this hallucination metric for hm okay just for sake i'm naming it you should not name like this okay okay now let's give it a run okay we uh, there is some issue okay 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 so i forgot a comma simple okay so we are running a dp well framework um, you can also specify model just for sake i'm not uh, currently adding it okay so here it is context cannot be for the hallucination metric so it uh, uh, okay 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 so the hallucination need context and for uh, relevancy it was a retrieval context so context and retrieval context are both same i guess so let me copy it okay so let me add it so whoever need context it will be context for him whoever need retrieval context it will be retrie retrieval context for them okay so both name are same so it will be context now okay let's go so let's run it and give it a run okay so it's running for all the test cases okay so finally drain okay so okay answer uh, okay answer relevancy is zero contextual relevancy is one contextual precision is also one hallucination is uh, the score is one it is not passed okay now let's see so it has failed so let's inspect it okay so here you can see uh, that answer relevancy so it scored zero why because score zero because the statement we don't sell source currently is irrelevant to the input which is correct correct i give full marks so contextual relevancy the score is one because there is no reason provided for irrelevancy this is uh, precision is also one because the uh, first node provided a, a direct and relevant answer stating all the customer are eligible for this uh, refund at no cost which address the concern about source not fitting okay definitely now hallucination is more about a score is one because the actual output does not address the context which states that all customers are eligible for a 30 day full refund at no cost okay so it, the answer is bit hallucination okay so that's it okay but uh, i can say that um, we are using an llm to get our answer and then again we are using llm for evaluating whether it is correct or not okay so it's a bit tricky one but uh, if you are using let's suppose in rag or uh, to answer your question if you are using a ba very basic model like maybe a smaller model and for evaluating if you are trying to use a smarter model to save the task force or the man force because see if you are hiring a testing team it will take a lot of efforts and there can be human error it will cause some bugs okay but if you use this model it's a bit um, costlier because gpt 40 it's like three dollar for one million token but uh, i guess no three, not three it's five million uh, five dollar per million token but it can save the human uh, effort and also it will be much more accurate okay M maybe it can be sometimes inaccurate also but most of the time it can be accurate because at some point you need some automations so definitely it's quite helpful okay um in a lot of cases okay and also um like it's not like you have to evaluate every time all these things maybe we can just comment it out and we can just uh, use this um, maybe hallucination one hm dot uh, maybe we can use the um, measure uh, this test case okay that we have created okay and so we are just trying to um, use this metric hallucination metric instead of all these metrics okay then just we can print hm dot score okay and it will also give a reason for it so let's also print the reason of it why it has given that score so let's give it a run it will be just for hallucination nothing else so uh, it has given one and the score is one because the actual output contradicts with uh, provided context uh, which clearly states that all customers eligible for a 30 day full refund at no cost uh, incorrectly mentions that there are some extra cost okay uh, i guess that's it uh, how we can uh, how we can add rag okay to this um what you say this evaluate dp well framework but definitely it's uh, not complicated because i uh, just uh, instructed you that uh, this context and retrieved context should be changed the rest can be same so that's why it's like uh, you can uh, like in in promfu it was already available and also you can create it programmatically and here you can also do it programmatically but if you want me to uh, make a quick video on how we can add rack to this dpl framework uh, surely i can do it okay so that's all for this video if you learn something new just um, like this video comment if you have any doubt or any instru any instruction or any improvement and uh, definitely um, um, go check it out this dp well framework and also the prompt for you you can combine both of them and create something great for this evaluation and for automating this testing process 
Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Thank you.